Okay, since I'm in the middle of digging this hole and getting rid of all these roots before I can fill it back up, I wanted to talk about um, the news, specifically uh, the young girl who was wielding the knife. She was just really angry for whatever reason, we don't know, and the police officer had to shoot her to stop her from stabbing somebody else. Um, well, there's been a disturbing trend lately where any time a young person is killed by the police, it's automatically the police's fault. Even though in each instance, the young kid, two things I noticed. One is they have a weapon of some kind, be it a car, a knife, or a gun in their possession. And two, there are a lot of other adults around, not a lot, but there are other adults around who contaminated the kid. And yet they're blaming the police for the contamination caused by bad adults around who were not watching out for the kid's best interest. So this, this constant yelling at the police on Twitter, it's horrible. Uh, horrible stuff going on. And I just want to point something out. LeBron James literally put a bounty out on the Columbus police officer's head and then he took it down. But um, the fact that he did it just shows he thinks Twitter is a valid format for him to learn from. So that's really disturbing because it's not. Um, but then something really weird happened. He, he does like this, this tweet was so offensive to me that he did that, that that uh, bounty tweet that he did, that he calls accountability, it was a bounty tweet. And yeah, he took it down. It was so offensive to me that I'm actually not watching the NBA until he apologizes. Not that it's that big of a deal, I get it, but it's over. I mean, I'm a big sports guy, I like baseball, football, basketball. I like following the stats and, the, and my favorite team. Done, NBA done. I really hope there aren't people in baseball or football that stupid as what LeBron did, but unless he apologizes, I just won't talk about the NBA. My, and I have blogs and things, I just won't mention them, I won't follow them on basketball, the whole thing. But anyway, that's not even the reason I'm doing this video. I'm just saying how offended I was. But literally, the day, I think it was the day before this young girl was tragically, the thing is, it was a tragedy, it's just not the police's fault. That's the thing that is so insane about all this protesting. If there is a tragedy involving the police and a young person, somehow it's the police's fault rather than the adults who were supposed to be supervising the kids or whoever the adult was in the area supervising the kids. It's never their fault. It's only the policeman's fault, police person's fault who shows up and has to make a split-second decision. It's insanity. But the day before this happened, LeBron James, LeBron James's uh, sports agency, it's called Clutch Sports, I think, with a K. Clever name, by the way. Um, and ironic, too, because LeBron James has made, you know, he's a clutch player most of the time. He puts up clutch numbers, right? So here's this police officer, had to act in the moment, in the clutch, and here's a guy who does it on the basketball court actually putting a bounty on somebody who has to do it in real life and, and in whose one year's time makes less money than LeBron James makes in one quarter of basketball, whether he's playing or not. So, but besides that, so he signs Terrence Clark and then there's this incident with the girl LeBron does the totally wrong thing, and he's been outed by others. They've already outed him for being stupid about what he did and what he to that police officer, okay? So that's just not, there's just no argument there. He was stupid, he was wrong, and he won't apologize. That's it. But the sad part is, he signs Terrence Clark, this incident happens, and then a day later, Terrence Clark is in a car accident. And I'm thinking, at first I'm thinking, is this karma? Is this karma getting back at LeBron James? I mean, the timing is just couldn't have been any more ironic, right? You literally did the stupidest thing you could do as a as a as a public figure and somebody who's well respected. That's LeBron James, 
And then a day later, your best signing that you made, this guy was going to be a lottery, a lottery pick, dies in a car accident for his car speeding. And it got me to thinking, after I thought of the karma angle, it got me to thinking, this same thing happened a few years ago with a journalist. And I re regret I don't remember his name, and I apologize for that. But his car was captured speeding, like really fast, and then he ended up crashing and dying. And apparently he was about to release some really important documents about the government that was going to reveal something really big. And I just got to thinking, was this a quid pro quo for what LeBron James did? Is it possible that, um, that the, uh, 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 somebody, not the police, just somebody out there who knows how to hack, hacked into the car and made it speed? Here are the pros and cons to that idea. The obvious reason is retribution. You know, how dare you, you do that to this police officer? That's not fair. It's not. Obviously, it's, it's, it's insane. But that would be a reason to do it by somebody who's insane and can do it, right? Here's a couple more reasons. He's new to the, I think he's new to the area. I read that. He was in Northridge, California. I know the area very well. The roads are very wide. So it is possible that he just saw these wide roads, because they're really in the San Fernando Valley. They have a lot of wide roads. We're talking three lanes each direction. A lot of one-story houses in places so with no buildings. So you can see for quite a distance. So it is possible he just was racing, but I'm actually thinking, and here's the thing, his friend might know better. Here's another thing. Why would you race ahead of your friend? What's the point of that? You're going somewhere together. You left, you worked out together with this guy. You left the place together. Why would you race ahead? What purpose would that, would that do? You're just going to have to stop and wait for him, right? So why would you do that? You wouldn't. And when I see the video, he's going really fast. It really seems to me like somebody took control of that car and just made it race. So it's a shame there's such a divide between conservatives and progressives because if this had been a, if this had happened to a conservative player, there would have been 50 conspiracy theories by now. But because it happened to somebody who is identified with, being LeBron James, with progressive politics, Nobody will dare say that it could have been any kind of conspiracy because that's something only conservatives come up with. So I used to be a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, until my mom was medically abused and died as a result at West Hills ER. So I was a lifelong Democrat, and I changed politics because of that. But I'm just going to say, here's the things that need to be investigated. How often was Terrence Clark speeding? Was he doing this regularly? They've got a computer built into the car. They can check the history, right? Is this the first time he was speeding? Was he doing it a lot? If he was doing it a lot, isn't there something in the computer that's supposed to, like, send out warnings or things to somebody to, like, give this guy a message to slow down? Right? So is there any record of him speeding before this? What about the cameras before the crash? Was he speeding then, too? How far ahead of his friend was he? What about other days? Was that the first day of working out? Had they worked out other days? Ask his friend. Did he normally do this? Did he have speeding tickets from before? And then, if it turns out it's totally like it's just an accident and he was speeding and he shouldn't have been, um, then LeBron James needs to take, take an accounting and say to himself, why am I so worried about what's going on on Twitter and all the knee jerks out there, and we don't know how many of them are being paid because there are, I read there are like at least 50 uh, groups out there, BLM groups, that all support each other whenever they're online. So it doesn't matter what it is, they're just going to agree, okay? This is what they did to the Clintons in the 90s, and it eventually it took hold. There were 20 people who were sending out faxes every day, anything they could find on the Clintons. And eventually it took hold, and the Clintons always had to deal with that, okay? So BLM's doing that now to the police officers. They're just harassing the police officers on anything. They never provide any um, uh, evidence to the contrary. They just have a rule. If somebody dies, it's the police officer's fault. And if they're underage and they die, then it's definitely the police officer's fault. That's their credo. And... 
that's not right. That's not fair to the police officer. All right. So all I'm going to say is if it, if if there, let's look and see if there was a conspiracy. If somebody out there hacked the car to make it speed up, and if they didn't, LeBron James really should apologize for what he did, but he should also take an accounting. If I, were, if I had an agency and I just signed Terrence Clark, I'd have a video waiting for him to see. The moment he, he was, before he signed the contract, these are the things we expect from you. Don't go out late at night and get drunk. Don't take drugs and drive, don't speed, and really be careful who you associate with, because anybody you associate with is going to be thinking about your money. The, N the NFL does this. They actually educate their players, because in the NFL, they get the average career is only 4.4 years. It's mighty, I think it's even gone down to below four years now. So they educate their players, look, you just got a big contract. Not only that, their contracts aren't even guaranteed, so they can, they only might be guaranteed half the contract. So they really try to teach them to be careful with their money. I don't know if the NBA is doing the same thing, but um, I kind of think LeBron James, instead of focusing on all of these mythical police brutality cases, he should be focusing on his people, making sure these young men that are going to be leaders, and they're going to make a lot of money, they're going to be role models, make sure they're ready. That time you spent tweeting and reading crap was not spent on your client. And, that, and, and, it's, and, and I blame you. I really do. If, if it's your fault. If, if, it's, if there's no monkey business, I blame you for his death. Not completely, because he still had responsibilities, but... You didn't prep him right. You gave him a big contract, a new car, and you didn't prep him right, if that's what happened. But I absolutely would explore and make sure that there was no, that nobody took hold of that car because it just didn't make sense to me that, that um, he seemed to be going too fast. I was trying to see if the video was speeded up because a lot of times security videos are sped up, like they're like twice, twice the speed. It didn't look sped up, and I mean, I mean, I can't tell for sure, but he looked like he was doing anywhere from 50 to 80 miles an hour. Maybe I mean, I mean, 50 on the low end. I mean, he looked like he was going pretty fast, and that just to me makes me think. I mean, I don't know. I just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense because your friend's in another car behind you, and you're obviously going somewhere, you know. And if you race ahead, you just got to wait for your friend anyway. So. So I just want to see an investigation done, and and if it turns out it, it was just bad decision making, I'm gonna blame LeBron James because uh, uh, he should have prop prompt. Uh, he should have uh, what's the word? Uh, he should have been there for his clients, his young clients. I mean, the parents trusted him. Where you're, you're signing our kid, don't just sign him and let him off. Let him go free. You gotta tether him a little bit. That's what you got to do. And he, I don't think he did it. That's my opinion. I don't know. Um, but like I said, we got two conflicting issues here. One is LeBron James quit being fixated on Twitter. You know, you know what's really sad? Just hire somebody for 50 grand a year to do research for you. So whenever an issue comes up, you just call that person. Don't make it your agent or your buddies who you've known all your life. Just somebody else. Somebody who, who just does research on stuff, call them and say, hey, I'm going to give you two hours, research the story, what am I missing? How about, I mean, you're making like $40 million a year plus endorsements, and you, and you just get online and voice your opinion because of what you read other people saying? I just, it's just so mind-boggling to me, and it's selfish. It's selfish. There are a lot of people out of work right now. You could have even been offering LeBron James scholarships. Like, for one month, you're just on call to do due diligence whenever LeBron James is interested in a story. And he'll contact you, and you have like two hours to come up with information about it. And in that one month, he pays you 10 grand, and then that covers maybe your college expenses for a year or something, or whatever. Something like that. Recirculate the money for something good. Don't just spout off because you can. And like I said, really, I, 
I actually hope in a way that it, that it, it was a hacker thing and the person's caught and it's exposed so it doesn't happen again. Uh, because the other one to me is just sad. The idea that you hire somebody, you sign somebody, and then you don't even uh, you don't even educate him enough on driving safely and and the future he has ahead of him and all that. So anyway, I'm done. I didn't get any any digging done, but I will now. I had to get that off my chest. I just anyway. Thanks for listening.